further enhance the charge uh, he on? Mm -hmm. He's on. Okay. The use of the PER 2000 underwater, and this is the only unit that I would recommend anyone try this with, that's because I saw it for myself that it could be done. That is, it enhances the signal clarity and decreases the, the discomfort from the, uh, the pulse. Sometimes uh, during acute phases uh, or infections or otherwise um, swelled terminal nerve endings uh, can be a bit painful for pulse feels. Uh, but under the water, the comfort level goes up 90%. Pain goes down 90%. So, I'm convinced if you have the option, hydrotherapeutic pulse electromagnetic fields is the way to go for effectiveness. I'll let you know tomorrow if I wake up. Yes. Now, the damage that you see dealing with here is this tumor went all the way caused a walnut sized tumor on my forearm. So that damage is what is being affected in it beneficially by PER 2000. But uh, it is obviously still damaged. But I'm alive to do it. So it wouldn't be otherwise. Also, rehabilitation for knee surgery. This is uh, an operation post-op for, uh, for uh, medial meniscus and anterior and posterior cruciate ligament surgery. So the rehabilitation of the knee on the right has uh, been markedly benefited by PER therapy. And it hurts less and feel and I think it's going to work better underwater. I'm going to try it over my cranial field. In 1985 August I received a severe life-threatening blow to the head. Uh, in a chemical factory that I was employed in as a uh, research development and engineering. And it hit me just to the right side of the midline. So it's caused my cranial bones to move. I believe it's given me some inherent risk factors of continued degeneration in the parts of my brain subjacent to that uh, trauma site as well as creating malposition of the bones of the cranium. So, I'm going to attempt to put my head close to this ring underwater and try to discern uh, what feels different about it uh, than in the air. Right away, what I can tell is that I can take it full strength directly on my scalp, where in the air, that's about as close as I can get. Because of the cranial bone problems, malposition, and uh, lack of mobility. And I'm going to go on the water again. Put my head against it. My most sensitive part is my face, so I'm going to try that. This is as close as it can get to my face without irritating dental problems. Now, and again. And the most sensitive problems that I have, um, I can't 
can now tell that uh, this is a superior way to apply it to the cranial field. Uh, I can take the same amount of power, actually greater power, the greater, I think the signal clarity is greater, but the, uh, any of the painful or stimulating effects are far less underwater. I would say 50 to 60 percent decreased and into a range of acceptability uh, where you could do it for a sustained period of time. So I'm going to lay back like this. Feel the spine. It doesn't hurt. And it's touching me. It has my cranial feel completely in, enveloped. And I can definitely feel cranial nerve damage from that impact in its full distribution and stimulation of it with no pain and direct contact. Put it directly on the scar underwater. And again the, da the damage from the cancer and the scar tissue formations in between are uh, evident because Normally, this I've got nerve damage on both sides. Underwater, again, marked decrease in sensitivity to the pulse and greater proximity to the target without sensitivity issues.